this armless, legless, faceless thing, won't you? Rolling down the street like a turd in the wind. That was sh As the Venom 2 trailer is due to come out any day now, it could actually be out while I'm rec while I'm editing this. But anyways, I've decided to give my review on Venom, the solo film from 2018. I've been a huge Marvel fan since I was like four years old with my favourite superhero being Spider-Man which I know is quite basic because a lot of people's favourite is Spider-Man but it's just I've left like from a young age because I used to watch the Sam Raimi films when I was young they were like my childhood and one of Spider-Man's biggest villains from the comics at least was Venom even though in this film he's portrayed as an anti-hero but yeah, so Venom was my favourite Marvel hero, um, sorry, Marvel villain, and I actually have proof of that. Look at this. In most films starring Tom Hardy, you're bound to get a great performance, because he does, but in this film he does a great job of showing him going crazy with this voice inside his head that no one else can hear but him. So where he questions whether he actually is going crazy or not, he, he really portrays that well. And if you've seen other reviews for this film, you would know that the, maybe the best thing, certainly one of them, is the relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom. Just they, even though they're both, they are both Tom Hardy, they just seem to work together really well, and it's quite funny to see them interact as well. As I'm British, when I receive a DVD or see a, a movie that sounds similar, the rating of this certain movie would be the rating 12, but I know in America it's called PG-13 and that's where reviewers tend to go to. Most of them are American, but that's where most people understand it, so I'm just going to stick to the PG-13. And that's what I think lets this movie down, because Venom is a scary looking character he can be very vicious so I think having a PG 13 rating contains what could his full potential contains his full like holds it back so like you do see Venom bite someone's head off in the background but you don't see any blood and at the end of the film you also see him well, you don't see him bite someone's head off, but it's implied because it cuts to someone's reaction instead of actually showing us. So I think if it had rating of R or 15 in the UK, it could have been very good and very successful, just like Deadpool and Logan. As the CGI of a shiny, gooey kind of black monster is hard to pull off in full CGI. A lot of the action scenes are done at night time or in the dark so you can't really see much of what's going on. And also there's a lot of like the smoke grenades which go off so you can barely see what's happening. So yeah, it could have been cool but again I think it also ties in with the PG-13 rating they can't show Venom just like biting everyone's heads off or just like viciously assaulting them. Now Riz Ahmed, I, besides this film I think I've only seen him in Nightcrawler which is one of my favourite films and so I've seen that he has good potential, like he is a good actor but I think I think it's the way his character is written in this film because he is this villain, this mysterious guy to the public but his motivation is just awful and you just you wouldn't see anyone act like that it's just so far-fetched and he, he's just so so dull like he 
in the MCU, he'd probably be like maybe bottom tier villain. Like he was just so bland, and his motivation was so unnecessary and extreme. Now this is a controversial one because I know when it was made, no one was entirely sure if it was tied in with Spider-Man. We all expected eventually it would involve him somehow, whether Venom goes into the MCU or Spider-Man is in the Sony universe. Uh, the, basically the origin from the story, the comics, is Spider-Man gets the symbiote he starts changing, like his personality starts changing, it becomes darker, so he gets rid of it, and then it goes onto his enemy from the Daily Bugle, Eddie Brock, and then that gives Eddie Brock the powers. But because it was on Spider Man, it kind of like, D4 music. I don't know, it downloaded his, his genetic DNA into the symbiote, that's why he had the same. Or in the comics he could shoot webs out of his wrists and also that's why they look similar like they have the same eyes and stuff I know in this film they didn't have the spider in his chest but I know it's a difficult situation but it just it feels a bit weird not having spider-man tied into that at all and when they inevitably meet they kind of look a bit similar I think I know it, that's just my take all might be fine with it, it just irritates me a little bit. I feel like it could have been, it feels a bit wasted, like if it was part of the MCU or it was tied into Spider Man, so it could have more meaning to it. And Eddie Brock could be a villain, not an anti hero. And one of the big main problems with this movie is its tone, it starts off all mysterious and kind of a bit like a horror by the way the symbiote travels through to different people as it goes on it's like about Eddie Brock's love life and then his depression and how he's lonely and then he gets Venom and it's all like they're chasing him down and he's trying to get rid of it it's just the tone is all different sometimes it adds comedy into Eddie Brock's lines which is really cringy and it doesn't really suit him at all it just does not fit the scenario or tone of this movie D4 music. despite being young at the time I was disappointed with Spider-Man 3's adaptation of Venom and I feel like in this Venom solo film it improves on that, it's not as embarrassing. Well, I say not as, but it's not embarrassing. But because of the PG rating, it feels like they're not giving us the proper venom we could have and that everyone wants. This movie also suffers from weak side characters and the lack of consistent tone, which dries it down, along with the bad dialogue. I really do like the character in the comics. But he feels slightly off in this movie, and I hope future films they can improve on it. So I reckon if you're, if you've seen, sorry, if you've read the comics when you were younger, like I have, and you're and you're a big Marvel fan, and you're a big fan of the MCU, I'd actually watch it because I think it could tie into the MCU in the future. And as of Obviously this film was made in 2018, as of today in 2020 we've seen the trailer for Morbius and it's definitely linked to it because you can see the vulture and the Spider-Man graffiti. So I, I actually would watch Venom. It's, it's not a bad film, it's just pretty disappointing. I personally would give it 6 out of 10 and 3.5 stars. I will display my rating system up on the screen. So basically, on IMDb, where you see like a film has, for example, Venom has 6.7. I've I've given like the thoughts of inside my head. So the rating in between that certain rating is the star rating I'd give it. 
And as mentioned before, Venom has a 6.7 on IMDb and 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is very harsh in my opinion. It wasn't a great film, but it wasn't terrible. It was still fun and enjoyable. Just disappointing for the diehard fans. Yeah, so as I said in the beginning of the video, the Venom 2 trailer should be coming anytime within the next few days, hopefully, from reports. It could be out when I'm editing this. In that case, my video will go out and I'll post my trailer reaction to Venom 2, which I have been waiting a while for because during this current situation in the world, there isn't much going on in terms of films. So, a trailer for a new Marvel film, I would absolutely take it. And also, I want to see how Carnage actually looks because he was another cool character from the comics. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope the trailer comes soon.